one of the most hotly, uh, hotly contested campaigns in all of America is uh, going to be Kentucky's U.S. Senator uh, campaign, the, the election for our senator, and that's um, that's Mitch McConnell's seat, right? The number one minority leader, big Republican, um, tried to make uh, Obama have a one-term policy. It's all he give a shit about was making uh, America fail, trying to crash our entire economy, opposing the president on everything that he tries to do. So when the economy crashes, then he could trick the American people and say, see, Obama was a bad president and make him a one-term president. He thinks you're stupid. Mitch McConnell thinks the American people are stupid. And there's something to that. I just saw a, st um, a statistic that just came out that said one out of four Americans thinks, or one out of, yeah, one out of four Americans believe, or, or does it, did not know that the earth revolves around the sun. So, that's, um, you know, so anyways, there's uh, five candidates that's running the Republican primary, and those five candidates are Matt Bevin, he's a businessman from Louisville, you got Brad Copas, who's a former National Guardsman from Lexington, you got Mitch McConnell, who's the incumbent U.S. Senator from Louisville, and you got Chris Payne, he's a badass party promoter of Salvisa, and then you got Shauna Sterling, a pastor of Sharpsburg, okay? So, we know about Matt Bevin, and we know about Mitch McConnell, but I want to put more emphasis on the other unknown candidates, because in a democracy, everybody's supposed to be welcome, and I hope to see five people at the Republican debates. So I'm going to repeat the, the candidates again. You have Matt Bevin. Matt Bevin is a businessman who's got a ton of kids, who's from Louisville. You got Brad Copas, who's a former National Guardsman from Lexington. You got Mitch McConnell. You got Chris Payne. So Chris Payne, party promoter from Salvisa. And then you got Shauna Sterling, a pastor of Sharpsburg. One more time to get it ingrained so that way you're an informed voter when you go into the booth. You got Matt Bevin, a businessman from Louisville. Brad Copas, a former National Guardsman from Lexington. Mitch, of course, we all know him. Chris Payne, party promoter of Salvisa. And Shauna Sterling, who's a pastor from Sharpsburg. No, you know, he's pro-Iraq war, pro-bank bailouts, pro-corporations, pro-big business. Hasn't given a shit about the working class for, you know, since forever. Just a low-life piece of shit, really. <laughs> uh, Mitch McConnell, he's a, the Mubarak of Kentucky. He's been in power for nearly 30 years. Mubarak was in there for 30 years. Ben Ali was only in there for 22 years. And now Tunisia has a fully working democracy. So it shows you that revolutions can work. Um, but, you know, Mitch is the Ben Ali of Kentucky, the Mubarak. He's been in power for a long-ass time. We've had all these perennial problems. He hasn't solved any of them. Essentially, Kentucky is just a one great big farm, and all the population are the sheep, and they want to try to get as many of those working-class people into the machine, into the cogs, so that way they can make these rich people a shit ton of money. Mitch McConnell, 30 years ago when he ran for the Senate, uh, he was a judge executive of Jefferson County, and then he ran for Senate, he replaced Walter D. Huddleston. Now, Walter D. Huddleston, now, in Gallatin County, there's, you know, he's got some, some kin in Gallatin County, but he's a Democrat, he was a moderate Democrat, which only shows you, you know, when you don't stand for anything, when you don't stand for your issues, when you don't, you know, take your licks, you're going to go down. So, um, Walter D. Huddleston, known as a, being a moderate Democrat, and he was also famous for losing the campaign to Mitch McConnell in 1984. So that's an interesting year. Um, and then we see the, the 30 years reign of terror, right? Ever since Mitch McConnell got into office in 1984, it's been 1984 for Kentucky the whole time. Now, the way that uh, Mitch McConnell was able to defeat Walter D. Huddleston was because he ran this blood hound dog ad. And it was uh, the blood hound dog ad was helped created by Fox News Titan Roger Ailes. So, this is before Roger Ailes became, you know, one of the fucking main guys in, in Fox News. Uh, he helped Mitch McConnell create this blood hound dog ad. And, and here it is. My job was to find D. Huddleston and get him back to work. Huddleston was missing big votes on Social Security, the budget, defense, even agriculture. Huddleston was skipping votes but making an extra $50,000 giving speeches. I just missed him when D. skipped votes for his $1,000 Los Angeles speech. Let's go, boys. We got him now. I was close at D.'s $2,000 speech in Puerto Rico. Me D. Huddleston. Thank you very much. We can't find D. Maybe we ought to let him make speeches and switch to Mitch for senator. 
even though the blood hound dog ad completely severed Walter D. Huddleston's career, just absolutely wiped it out. Um, the uh, 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 Walter D. Huddleston actually was in the Senate ninety four percent of the times for all the votes. So you know they're making it sound like he's never showing up to work, but he's he was in there ninety four percent of the time. And versus like Mitch McConnell's career, where he's just he's there, but he's voting against everything that Barack Obama does, even bills that Mitch McConnell himself had signed. So, Mitch McConnell, a little bit of background, you know, he's a big Bush guy, right? But he's been in there for five terms. He's been in there since 1984. So, he was there through Ronald Reagan. He was there through um, George Bush Sr., then Bill Clinton, and then, you know, the George W. So, you see, and then Obama. According to the Washington Post in 2005, Mitch McConnell had an estimated wealth of $3 million. So, this is in 2005. He had, you know, $3 million bucks. Then, in 2006, he had $5.4 million. In 2007, he had $7.8 million. 2009, Mitch's wealth just keeps on going up and up and up. In 2009, it was $19.9 million. In 2010, it was $27.2 million. So between a span of five years, he'd gone from $3 million, which is incredible. That's really fucking rich, right? 2005, $3 million to 2010, $27.2 million. So being a career politician has made Mitch McConnell extraordinarily wealthy while Kentucky is drowning in... in in poverty, right? So there's we have some of the poorest counties in the state: McCreary County, Owsley County, Clay County, the, um, the in you know in the entire all of America. That's like the poorest area in like all of America. So Miss McConnell becomes really fucking rich while the uh, Kentucky citizens are going down. There, there's uh, poverty everywhere, um, homelessness, and um, so. People, you know, working class people losing their unemployment benefits. He cuts unemployment benefits because Mitch McConnell don't understand what it, what it's like to be working class people. The um, food assistance. He's also cutting, you know, our, our food stamps. So that means people can't eat. And if he did uh, succeed in cutting food stamps, then a lot of these counties in eastern Kentucky would starve to death because Kentucky is a a, um, a receiver state. So for every dollar we send to Washington, we get a dollar fifty back. So if you cut the financing that comes back to us, we're going to lose out. A lot of people, you know, live on that, and they need that to survive. If you don't have it, well, then they'll die out. So Kentucky's number one for air pollution, child abuse, deaths, car wrecks, heart disease, obesity, cancer. We're shitty in education, health care, economics. We're one of the poorest states in the nation, and um, these perennial problems have been here since 1984. Mitch McConnell is definitely to blame for every fucking thing that's going on in Kentucky. Now, the five candidates that had run, I had um, mentioned, you know, all the ones that are in the race now, but Gurley Martin has been taken out of the race. Why is Gurley Martin out of the race? Maybe because of the embarrassment that Rand Paul fucking, you know, treated him. Basically didn't give a shit that he was a, a legitimate candidate in the race. And um, so, and, and they kicked him out. So that he was uh, he ran for Senate in 2010, four years ago. 1929, on the courthouse square in Hartford, Kentucky, Ohio County, had a public hanging for a rapist. He wasn't black either. Um, okay, I think the question was uh... um, when Rand Paul and uh, Jack Conway were was up. So Gurley Martin, he's a 90 year old from Owensboro, and um, he earlier filed, filed, but he withdrew. But what had happened in 2010 is significant. He's a World War II veteran. He's a Kentuckian. He, he filed, you know, everything. He showed his birth certificate online. You know, he was a legitimate person and a legitimate candidate. But he's bullied, bullied out of the debates by. Um, yeah, Trey, too. Um, what was that guy's name? Trey? Trey? Trey something. I don't know. But you had Rand Paul, Jack Conway, and Trey. So here's the clip of Gurley Martin getting kicked out of the debates. From Bowling Green, Kentucky, Dr. Rand Paul. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you for being in Paducah today and for taking part in this very important forum. We welcome you. Here. As part of the blind draw, as I mentioned a few moments ago, that we had to backstage to start the opening statements. Our first opening statement will come from Dr. Rand Paul. Dr. Paul, three minutes, sir. Thank you. I want to congratulate the Grassroots Coalition for inviting us. I think it's important 
I filed before in the Houston people, and I am legally here by invitation to make the topic and to share with you. So it's no big surprise Kentucky hates democracy and having all these choices. You're only supposed to have two people in this political system that we have. Um, the t 2008 Cynthia McKinney wasn't even on the Green Party or wasn't even on the ballot for president so they didn't even put the Green Party candidate on the ballot and only 25% of Kentuckians vote. Only 25%. Another reason why Republicans want to uh, stop people from voting. So uh, Mitch McConnell He's the king of earmarks. He's completed, uh, completely gone 180 in this campaign, right? Since Rand Paul got elected, now Mitch McConnell's pretending he's a Tea Party candidate. And Rand Paul is becoming fucking Mitch McConnell. They basically swap places. And uh, so he's acting more like Rand Paul. Uh, Mitch McConnell got hemp legalized in Kentucky, which is a great thing. He's going to brag about that the entire time. He's for colleges to raise it for research purposes, but they're still absolutely against marijuana legalization. Mitch Mitch McConnell has paid Rand Paul's campaign manager off. So Jesse Bitten, this is uh, so Rand Paul gets elected in Kentucky, and then Mitch McConnell is going to pay Rand Paul's people off um, in order to get their staff. Jesse Bitten is, you know, they pretend to be libertarians, but they're not libertarians whatsoever. The um, Jesse Bitten, his justification that somebody had recorded him on the phone and they had asked him if he, you know, why is he for Mitch McConnell? And he's like, well, I'm basically just holding my nose until, you know, the, the, he's working with Mitch McConnell to help Rand Paul's chances for the presidency. And so he's just kind of holding his nose right now because, you know, he fucking hates Mitch McConnell, thinks he stinks and thinks he's fucking worthless. And, uh, but he's doing it because he thinks that Rand Paul can, um, you know, become president. The more you associate with the uh, the mainstream status quo Republicans, then the more likely chance that people will associate Rand Paul with being a true Republican. Um, and I, I, Rand Paul probably don't even know what he is anymore. So, let's see, that's, uh, you know, that's Matt Bev, or that's uh, Jesse Bitten, and I got a clip of that. How's everything going? How's everything going with you? It's going well, keeping busy, raising the family, mining, uh, you know, mining the store, so to speak. But um, still with? Are you still with that seminary? I am. I am. And, Good stuff, man. Yeah. And I guess you're doing something else then. I'm doing something else, man. I am. Uh, you know, between you and me, I'm sort of holding my nose. The for two years because what we're doing here is going to be a big benefit to Rand in 16, so that's my long vision, so. Okay. All right, very good. Thanks. All right, man. See well, ya. Mail up to me and don't be a stranger. Call me anytime. Okay, we'll do. Bye-bye. Rand Paul's also turned 180, so, you know, Rand Paul, he's basically shitting all over Matt Bevin, and he's sitting there criticizing him, because Matt Bevin had said that he was for the Wall Street bailout, and then he was against it, and so they're saying, ah, ha, gotcha, they're the $700 billion federal bank bailout, which is also called TARP, the Troubled Asset Relief Program, so the, um, he's saying that Matt, you know, he flip-flop on the issue, Matt Bevin was... He's saying that he's he's criticizing Mitch McConnell for being for the thing, but he's actually against the thing. And since he's um, uh, sort of flip-flopping on the issue, Rand Paul's saying he loses credibility, but we all fucking ignore that Mitch McConnell actually voted for the motherfucker thing, right? So maybe Matt Bevin just came to his senses. Um, but that's uh, Rand Paul's anti-Tea Party. He's shitting all over Matt Bevin, which is more closely aligned to Rand Paul's belief because he's kissing the establishment's, uh, or sucking the establishment's dick. And uh, Matt Bevin's right now is the Kentucky Tea Party favorite, and they're calling for Mitch to resign. So Matt Bevin is getting a lot of um, good attention. 
Now, Matt Bevin, he's pro-charter schools, um, which right now, Kentucky does not allow any charter schools to be formed, which is bullshit because the race to the top program, we lost money just because there's no pathway for a charter school to be established. And they're kind of doing charter schools right now in uh, JCPS and with the innovative schools, but really they're not doing you know any, anything of value. Um, Matt Bevin, he's pro-charter schools. He's uh, pro-right to work, so he's against all unions, all unionizing. So this is all you know, typical Republican shit. He's anti-working class.